The food you eat determines the microbes that live in your gut. Certainly true when it comes to inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease and colitis. What, what life-destroying conditions these are. You, every, you can't go to a movie, you can't get an airplane. Every 20 minutes you've got to run to the bathroom with bloody diarrhea. It's a horrible disease. And you ask your gastroenterology colleagues, like I do, uh, what's the, does it matter what the patient's eating? Oh, no, it doesn't matter what they say. Uh, there's never been any study showing that diet has anything to do with these diseases. Doctor, how can you say that? Have you actually looked? <clears throat> You'll see that there's a vast literature showing that indeed um, the uh, folks with these nasty diseases uh, have a tremendous amount of, of mischief-making bacteria down in their gut. And animal protein especially summons up these bacteria uh, that uh, some contributes to these terrible inflammatory diseases. And uh, <clears throat> inflammatory bowel disease is, a, is, the, is the overarching label for Crohn's and colitis. And uh, sugar certainly, f and fat, uh, certainly fosters uh, the, uh, uh, this inflammatory state. And, uh, and again, uh, you'll find it's uh, animal fat, uh, vegetable oils, animal protein, milk protein. Uh, it fosters Crohn's disease. When the folks who eat lots of vegetable protein, they have less of it. And if, if the terms um, the animal protein, sugars, oils, fats, dairy rings a bell, that's what fast food really is. And indeed, um, it turns out that the fast food eaters um, have just a nasty incidence of Crohn's disease, which is known as a young person's disease. Well, what are the young people eating these days? Um, and indeed, um, there's no question, Crohn's disease, colitis, so, so associated with consumption of fast food. And there's a number of mechanisms, but surely the bacteria that get summoned up from all this animal protein and sugar and fat uh, plays a major role. <laughs> However, if my patients, we get them into remission and get them on a whole food plant-based diet and their Crohn's doesn't come back and their colitis doesn't come back and it goes away and they get on with their lives. And um, they, um, this is just a semi-vegetarian diet. They just told them you can eat meat you know, once or twice a week. They, they, uh, they ate it even less than that and they didn't relapse. Oops, sorry, uh-oh, that's not what I want to do, sorry. Um, come back here. Well, hopefully you can edit that out. Which, uh, which one did I hit? Oh, uh, no, don't do that to me. Um, let me try this, all right. Okay, hold it. Uh, I reboot here. Did not help. Okay, which one did I hit? Okay. Thank you. When in doubt, call someone who knows. Okay. And very importantly, getting around to the topic, the the topic topic of the uh, of this talk. In our intestinal tract, as food is going by, there's a lot of things going by that you do not want in your bloodstream. The job of the intestine is to extract nutrients from our food stream into our bloodstream. But there's a lot of things going by in the food you do not want in your bloodstream. <clears throat> Undigested food protein, the breakdown product of these bacteria when they die off their cell walls, uh, and various toxins in there. You don't want that in your bloodstream. And a healthy intestinal lining does not permit that, uh, these molecules to get in your bloodstream because there's a very tight junction between these cells. But that junction is, that barrier is not made of steel. And there are bacteria that you can summon up, we already talked about Pseudomonas, will disrupt that barrier. What we're talking about um, is the, the nature of the, of the seal between these two cells. Um, the microbiologists refer to this as the tight junction. And here's one cell, here's another. And it's the tight junction between, here you see it under the electron microscope. And you want these nice and snug so nasty molecules from the food don't slither down between the cells, get into your bloodstream. But there is now evidence that the tight junctions are disrupted due to, um, due to what these bacteria put out. 
It really matters. Every meal determines the bacteria that live in your gut, and it will set you up for disruption. Here is the, um, here's your, the food going by in the gut, and if you disrupt uh, this membrane, you're going to have all sorts of nasty proteins starting leaking into your bloodstream. This is just from the bacteria. Plus, welcome to the 21st century, we consume things that directly injure those tight junctions. non anti-inflammatories, Advil, Aleve, um, these injure the gut lining directly. And this is of great concern when you think of the tens of millions of people taking these products. And the ones that, of course, have the greatest concern are those with the inflamed joints. So they, in the commercials, they take, take two leave, take my leave every morning, ooh, just two, gets me through the day. And they take it day after day, week after week, month after month, and this injures the tight junction, and um, you start getting food proteins leaking into the bloodstream that flow through the joints and make their joints more painful. So what do they do? Take more leave, right? And around and around it goes. Uh, the only anti-inflammatories that will not increase the leaky gut, uh, are aspirin and one called imbumatone. The, the trade name is Relefin, and you can ask your doctor to prescribe this. But uh, if you've got a headache or some inflammation, uh, don't be taking um, these types of antibiotics, uh, anti-inflammatories. Alcohol directly injures the gut lining, makes it leaky. Uh, people who've had chemotherapy, many of those agents will uh, give, you, wind, give you a leaky gut. The pesticides and herbicides on food I uh, can do this. Some people, and some people, gluten can do this. People who walk around with how do you generate lots of stress in their lives, their adrenal glands put out lots of cortisol into their bloodstream. Well, the cortisol in the blood goes through the liver, the liver takes it and excretes it down into the bile. And now you've got the cortisol from your stress levels flowing through your intestines, and it makes the, the tight junctions uh, not so tight. So you get this situation. Here's what it should normally look like, but you but kill off the good bacteria here. Let the nasty set up housekeeping. They invade um, the uh, tissues here. They'll and that, and along with the direct toxins we talked about, will injure the uh, tight junctions here, and you get on a molecular basis. So not, the spaces aren't really this big, uh, but molecules that have no business getting your bloodstream start getting through your bloodstream, and they start flowing throughout the body, and they set off inflammatory reactions of every kind. They, will, they flow through your joint membrane, set off <coughs> inflammatory joint disease. They'll flow through your kidneys, your immune system, set off lupus. Uh, all sorts of, um, of autoimmune diseases are spawned probably by this mechanism. Um, the allergy, um, hay fever. Um, as you have the people, oh, my hay fever is bad. Never think it had anything to do with their diet. But if their gut is leaky, they've injured the gut through the alcohol and the sugar and all of that, and, and they've got uh, all sorts of proteins uh, leaking into their bloodstream, which flows through their capillaries in their nasal membranes. These membranes get really reactive, and they get on a micro level, they get swollen and full of fluid and histamine. And then when that little pollen grain comes along and lands on this already primed membrane, whoosh, you get this big outpouring of mucus and, and uh, tears, etc. And say, oh, my hay fever is bad. But really, what have you been eating? Well, how have you been treating your gut? A lot of that is coming. It's not genetic. It's coming from conditions created by the diet. Same thing. It'll flow through the bronchial membranes. People's asthma gets worse, <coughs> and uh, uh, flows through the skin. Sets off hives. It becomes again and again. You show up in the emergency room. They give you Benadryl. They give you cortisone. They give you adrenaline. Um, where does it come from? We don't know. It's just, just your genetics. You're just prone to this. No, it's not. It's from your gut. It's what the conditions you've set up there from what you've been eating. <coughs> and so I'm afraid my paleo colleagues and friends and patients not only set themselves up for an epidemic of colon cancer and heart attacks and strokes, but inflammatory bowel disease and a bunch of autoimmune diseases along with it. And you know, a lot of the young folks are on board with this, and when you're 25, you can eat linoleum glue and nothing, nothing bad happens. But man, you do this year after year after, no, nobody who's promoting this has really followed people along 
for five years, 10 years, 15 years, eating flesh three times a day. Well, we've kind of run that experiment. It's called America, and we see what the truth of it. But people promoting this as a healthy way to eat, I fear are unleashing a plague of, uh, of terrible diseases, <clears throat> people who follow this.